Hey everybody! Welcome to the Jada and Stitches show where we are channeling a little Doctor Who from the 60s today. We've had a lot of requests to do a Doctor Who themed crochet article. So being a big fan of the show, I got really excited about this and I put in a lot of thought. And I thought, if I was Doctor Who, what would I want to make that I would be able to travel through space and time with? And I thought, since I can't have a great big spaceship, I will make myself a TARDIS in which I can carry and travel things with me when I go. So, <laughs> I made a TARDIS bag. So not only can I travel with my TARDIS, I can carry stuff around with it too. <laughs> I had a lot of fun designing this and it's not a difficult uh, pattern at all. I'm going to take you through it step by step and it's made in pieces so don't look at it and be intimidated because it's really not that big a deal. I also, because <laughs> I couldn't help myself, added a little something that's a bit of a joke for all you fans out there. I put that on the back so that's just a little something for me and if the bag's off somebody might see it but that's just more for me. And you know what? It actually is bigger on the inside. <laughs> because I've lined it. So this is a really awesome bag. I've not put any of the weight of the things I'm going to carry around with me on the actual crochet of the bag. I lined it with some simple cotton fabric I had lying around. I just made a really basic two panel lining. I'll show you how to do that as well. And sewed it in around the top. There you go. It's also got a really basic closure. So you could do something extra special with this if you wanted. You could put in a button. You could even put in a zipper. But I just did a really basic tie so that if I do have anything in here that I don't want to fall out, it won't fall out. But that is my very own TARDIS and now you are going to have one too. So let's go to the craft table in the best Doctor Who way possible. <sighs> In order to make our TARDIS bags, or a regular bag if that's what you're doing, we're going to start with the yarn. So I'm using 4-ply worsted weight yarn. I've got this nice TARDIS blue. Obviously I'm not going to need this much, but I happen to have this ball lying around. And I've got black and white for the accents, and all three balls are Red Heart brand. They're all worsted weight, and they're all acrylic. So my stitches should be pretty much uniform because I'm using all the same kind of yarn. I am using a 4.5 millimeter hook for this project. This is a little bit bigger than the one I normally use because I want my stitches to be a little larger. I've got some pretty plain blue cotton fabric for the liner. So I'm actually going to line this purse and you don't have to, but it does make your bag a lot stronger if you do that. Plus, none of your little pieces will fall through your stitches and it just is a really nice way to finish off your bag. It gives it a lot more strength and it's really, really simple. You can use a sewing machine if you have it. If not, you can hand sew what you need to sew in this project and I will be hand sewing the lining to my bag when I'm finished. So you're going to need a needle and thread for that. You're going to need a pair of scissors, a yarn needle just in case you've got some ends you want to pull in, and it's also going to be helpful to have a tape measure for this project. So once you've got all those things, let's jump in. The first thing we're going to do is start on the front and we're going to make two doors. <laughs> two panels that are going to be the two front doors of our TARDIS. So you're going to make two of these units and I thought I'd get one started so that you can see what I'm talking about and then we'll do the second one together. So you're going to make two of these because the TARDIS has two front doors. Uh, this is also a typical um, an old police box, a uh, British police box, and I don't know too much about the history of these things, but I understand that apparently you could make a citizen's arrest or a beat cop could make an arrest and stick a guy in the police box, lock him in there, and then um, phone back up. <laughs> and back up would arrive and uh, take care of the hooligan who was locked up inside. So this police box has front doors and we're going to make two of them. So we're going to start with the white part, so the what's sort of the window area of this panel. And you're going to start with your white and you're going to make a slip knot. 
And what we're going to do is make a square. So we're just making a nice square window, really simple. And it's going to be nine stitches by nine rows. So in order to start, we have to chain ten. One, two, nine, ten. If it's going to be nine stitches, why did I chain ten? Well, because you always have to have a turning chain on the end of your single crochet rows because that is what keeps all of your rows straight on the sides. So you've chained ten. We're just going to single crochet back and forth. So remember to work into the second chain from your hook. That's where you begin your row. And just single crochet back across this foundation chain row. When you get to the end you'll have nine stitches, so nine single crochet stitches. And remember you want to chain one at the end of your row, turn your work, and you're going to work nine rows in total of single crochet in this white. So there's row one. You've got nine stitches across the top of your row, so this is a nine single crochet stitch wide row. We're going to chain one for a turning chain, flip our work, and you work into that first real stitch. So always skip that first little chain from the hook because that's your turning chain. Work into the first real stitch and work nine single crochet across that for row two. Make nine rows in total, and I'll see you at the end of your nice white square. Once you've got nine rows, so count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine rows by nine stitches. That's all you need for your TARDIS window. So just snip your yarn and pull that back through the working loop on your hook all the way. Give it a tight tug. And that is the window. Now we're going to continue putting on the rest of the door. So this is going to be the top of your window. This is sort of your, your last row is going to be the top. And we're going to work across the bottom down. So we're going to pick up our blue yarn. We're going to make another slip knot because we're going to add. I'll just get this out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. We're going to join our blue yarn in the corner, so the bottom foundation row, with a single crochet. And you know me, I like to work over all of my, my little short ends. And if you find it easier to weave them in, please do so. Otherwise, you just treat that slip knot on your hook as the working loop, pull up a loop in the corner stitch, and then single crochet them both together. Your first row is going to look a little weird. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay, you're going to single crochet across the bottom, which was the bottom, of your window. And because you had nine stitches in each row, you're going to continue to have nine stitches in each row. So get to the end of your first blue row and double check your stitch count because you want to make sure that you don't mess up your stitch count right at the very beginning here. So here we go. The one that we started with counts. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Remember the loop on your hook doesn't count. So there are nine stitches across the bottom of my window. So basically I'm doing this and I'm working down. We come to the end of the row. We chain one for a turning chain, flip our work, and continue single crocheting back across this row. In total, you will have 15 blue rows. So nine white rows and 15 blue rows added on to that. So you can continue to single crochet back and forth and back and forth, back and forth. Make sure that you always have nine stitches at the end of each row. If it looks a little funny on the corners, don't worry because we're going to even that out when we border it. Remember to chain one at the end of each row, flip your work, and continue single crocheting.
So once again, that's nine white rows and 15 blue rows. And I'll see you at the end of your 15th row. Once you've come to the end of your 15th row, always good to count, make sure you have nine white rows and then 15 blue rows. So once you've got that done, we're gonna start putting the border on. So you see how this is actually bordered. It's so it actually looks like a door. <laughs> so from the end of your 15th row, you're going to chain one and we're gonna work up the first raw side. So we're gonna work a single crochet into the end of each row all the way up to the very next corner of this panel that we're making. So you've chained one and you're going to put the first single crochet in the side of your last single crochet from that 15th row. And you can work 15 single crochets up the side of your 15 blue rows and that's probably the easiest thing to do is to just sort of count 15 and when you get to the end of your blue section you should have created 15 single crochets up the raw side of your panel. I've worked 15 single crochets up the 15 blue rows and now I'm going to work nine more up the nine white rows. So I'm going to continue with the blue. One, eight, and nine. Now nine, your last stitch should technically be in the side of the first single crochet of that row. So it's going to sit to the side. A little bit funny, but that's okay. You can slip, sort of slip it right in underneath that stitch. We're at a corner, so we're going to chain two, one, two, turn our work. Now we're going to work across the top of our last row of that original white square. So the first single crochet is going to be in that first stitch. So the same place that you just put the last stitch of your raw row, you're going to put the same you're going to put a stitch right through that same stitch there. And remember, because this is nine stitches across, you're going to want to have nine blue stitches across. So that single crochet counts as your first blue single crochet across this row. Two, eight, and nine. So there's my last single crochet across the top. I'm going to turn my work and I'm going to be working down the second raw edge. So same thing, it's a corner, so I'm going to put two chains in to create my corner and I want to work nine blue single crochets down the white part of my window here, so nine across here and an additional 15 down the, the second side of my, my blue panel. So I'm going to put my first single crochet into the side of that top stitch. And the easiest way to do it is just sort of to count. So I'm going to count nine. So that was my first one. And I'm going to work eight more across this white section. One, two, 14, and 15. And like before, I'm going to put 15 kind of using this stitch as the place to put my last single crochet for the edge of that row. Then I'm going to chain two to make my corner, flip my work, and I'm going to work nine single crochet across the bottom of my panel. So that first one goes into the same place that I just put my last stitch. One, two, and nine. So this last stitch brings me back to the beginning of my panel's border row. So because my first stitch was sort of created on the side here, I want to create a corner, two chains, and I'm just going to slip stitch into that first single crochet that I made. So I'm going to skip that little sort of chain that I made, my turning chain to start my border row. I'm going to chain two for my corner and slip stitch into my first single crochet of that row. 
and I'm going to lay it flat, stretch it out a little bit, make sure that my corners look nice and neat. There. There is border row one on my second panel. For border row number two, we're going to do things just a little bit differently. So not really differently. We're going to chain one to start our row, single crochet in the same stitch, and we're going to work a single crochet in every single stitch all the way up here. And when we get to the corner, I'm going to show you what's a little bit different. So one single crochet in each stitch up this side. All right. Once you've gotten to the corner, you've put your last single crochet in your sort of last stitch on the side and you've gotten to that chain two corner. You're going to put your hook right through that whole space and single crochet into it. And now you're going to make the second corner or the first corner, I should say, of your second row. So you've single crocheted into that corner space, the chain two space from the previous row. We're only going to chain one. So just one in these corners. Single crochet back into the same corner space and now you can continue across the top. So zip across the top of your panel and when you get to the next corner, so the next chain two space from the previous row, instead of chaining two you're only going to chain one. So into that corner space you're going to work so here's the corner space, a single crochet, chain one, and a single crochet. And the reason that we're doing only one single crochet instead of two is because we want to fill in that space. We want to fill in that space and we don't want a big um, gappy space up here because we only are putting on two border rows and because this is going to be a purse we don't want big gappy spaces. So only a chain one in each corner for row two. So remember that. Single crochet in each stitch around and when you get to the corner spaces of the previous row, single crochet, chain one and single crochet into each space. Remember when you get to that last corner space, so here's where we started row two, we chained one and started single crocheting we have to put in the final corner. So you single crochet, chain one, and single crochet into that corner space from the previous row, and then just slip stitch into the top of that first single crochet to finish off your row. And that is it for the panel. So we'll snip our yarn, pull it back through our loop, lay it flat, and sort of stretch it out <laughs> and I like to finish things off before I go any further by weaving in my little tails. Okay, we've got the main part of the panel done. Now all we have to do is put on the window detailing. And this is a combination of things. So I've chain stitched through the fabric all the way around the edge of the window to give it like a nice window frame. And then I've just quickly embroidered straight lines across it to make it sort of look like a paneled window. So this is how you chain through fabric if you've never done it before. We're going to take our black yarn and make a slip knot, but a looser slip knot than you normally do. So we're going to make a slip knot and tighten it a little, but not a lot. You see how much gap there is between my hook and where the actual knot is? You want it to be about that big because you are going to take your hook back out, pick up your panel, and in the corner stitch, so I'm going to work through every, everywhere you see the blue yarn having gone through the white to make a stitch on that first border row. That is where I'm going to put each chain. So I'm going to slip my hook through that corner space right where the blue yarn goes into the white yarn, pick up my slip knot, careful not to pull it tight, and pull it back up just a little bit. Try not to split your yarn. <laughs> there you go. And pull it up just to the point where the knot butts up against the back of the fabric. And don't try not to pull it too tightly. Then you're going to take your hook, 
put it through the next stitch hole and wrap your yarn and pull it back up and through just like a regular old slip stitch except that now you're working through the fabric so if you've never done this before it might take a little bit of getting used to but it's a really nifty effect and I'm going to do a tutorial uh, specifically on this very shortly because this is a great technique for doing all sorts of top side decoration so I really really love this kind of, of detail so I'm going to slip stitch all the way down the side of my window when you get to a corner make sure you put your last stitch in the last sort of corner spot where there's a blue the two blues should basically be in the same spot um, so you want to make sure you put your last stitch down that side in that little space then I've always found it sort of easy if you take your hook out and either make your work away from you if you find that's easy or you know pull it towards you if you find that's easy but just take your hook out reposition it so that you're going in the next direction now this isn't as complicated as it sounds you just want to make sure that you don't twist your yarn and you're going to continue to chain through all of these little spaces where the blue stitches have been put across the white and you're just doing that to outline the white in as sort of as efficient a way as possible it's not going to be absolutely perfect you're not going to sort of sh you're not going to cover all the white as you can see from these funny little corner bits but when it's all done you can pull the black out and you can sort of tug some of the white pieces to the back remember it's your work so if you want to sort of tug it and pull it and and uh, pull everything into shape and into place where you want it to um, that's part of what you get to do as the creator so um, just slowly work your way around remember to um, take your hook out if you're not so sure about the direction you're going to go in you want to remain kind of having the loops all lie flat across your fabric and you're just going to go around nice and simply grabbing the yarn and slip stitching until you get all the way back to the beginning when you get back to the beginning put your last stitch through the same place where you started but then pull up on your loop a little bit take your hook out and just to the side so some little spot just to the side of where you you brought your two loops up bring your hook up from the bottom so from behind and grab that loop that you took your hook off of and pull it down through the fabric so that it comes out the other end here so there it is on the other end then you can snip your yarn you don't need too much of a tail here and fasten off like you normally would it's just that you're doing it on the back side of your fabric so grab that tail pull it through the loop and pull it tightly not super tight but tight enough and you can knot your two tails together just to make sure that that's um, they're not going to go anywhere or if you feel that they're in pretty good condition like your knots aren't going to unravel you can just sort of weave them in a little bit now if you're going to add lining to your bag like I'm going to then you don't really have to be worrying about it being super neat back here because it's all going to be hidden by the liner um, so I just like to do this to kind of get them all out of my way while I'm working and that's enough there we go then you can just lay it flat and you can kind of pull the chaining the sort of the chain stitch pull it outwards so that it's getting kind of shoved to the edge of that white border so that it just sort of just so that it, it makes covers the, the edges a little bit more and you might have a little bit of white showing through but that's perfectly okay this is after all an old British police box and um, it's probably seen some pretty severe wear and tear <laughs> 
So the next thing we want to do are these lines. This is just to kind of give it that leaded glass, um, that, that glass look, or I suppose in this case it's uh, wrought iron bars, so whomever might be inside the police box can't just readily get out. So I'm going to take a length of black yarn, not a whole lot, but I'm going to do some sewing now. So I'm going to take my yarn needle and I'm going to thread up my yarn. And I'm going to start by eyeballing the size of my white square. So I want to split this into thirds. As you can see here, I went a third of the way down and I put another one in two thirds. And then I went a third of the way across and I put another one at two thirds. So I know that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine stripes. So if I come down one, two, three, and I bring my needle from the back, so from the back, out through the front, at about where I'd say one third of the way down is. So I bring that yarn all the way out. I'm going to leave a little bit of a tail back here, so just enough that I'll be able to tie it up later. And I'm going to go straight across and down the other side. So I'm just putting in a single line. Then I'm going to eyeball it. I'd say that looks like it's about two-thirds of the way down. Bring my yarn out and all the way across and down the other side. Now I'm going to go from the bottom. So I'd say that that's about a third of the way across. So bring my yarn out and all the way to the top and out the bottom and on the other side so I, again I'd say that's about a third of the way across bring my yarn out and all the way down to the bottom oh, did I make that kind of crooked? I might have nope that's okay so I don't want it to be too tight because I don't want to pull my window out of alignment. Now to make sure that they don't slide around you want to just tack the corners kind of like a tic-tac-toe board. So I'm going to bring my needle out as close to the the cross of these black yarn uh, lines here as I can and I'm going to go right across both of them so I'm going to skip over both of them you can see where I brought it out to one side I'm going to skip over both and I'm going to go down through the same hole and this will just tack it into place and I'm going to do the same thing over here over both down through the same hole that tacks it into place and same thing up here up one corner, go over both, and back down through the same hole underneath. Tax that into place. And the last corner. Up through one corner, over both, and back down through the same hole. Going through the same hole kind of helps keep that stitch small too, so it's not super recognizable. And that will do for that. Now you can flip it over, you can snip your yarn if you have a whole lot like me and just knot these two ends together. So just a regular old knot, doesn't have to be anything super fancy. Again, if you're lining it, you're not going to see this anyway and that's the back of your, your panel. And then you've got both your panels finished. So now all we have to do is attach them. In order to attach our two TARDIS doors, we're just going to single crochet the two panels together. So we're going to start with our blue yarn and make a slip knot. Remember not to make it too tight, you want it to be able to move around on your hook. Then we're going to identify the bottom, the bottom right corner of the left panel and the bottom left corner of the right panel 
And remember, in that last, those corners that we did, you should have two chain, two single crochets and a single chain in that last corner space. So remember that last row we did, we went single crochet, chain one, single crochet. So it's this chain one in between those two single crochets where you're going to put your hook and then you're going to identify the same thing on the other side. So there's my two single crochets and there's the chain right in the middle. And I'm going to put my hook right through that. So what you should have are your two panels back to back, both facing out. We're going to join with a single crochet. So your loop should already be on your hook. You've got your hook through both those tiny little corner spaces, the chain one corner spaces for both corners. And you're going to wrap, pull up a loop so that you've got your slip knot and another loop. So that counts as your two loops and then single crochet through both. And that is your first connector. All you're going to do is single crochet through each set of stitches. So make sure you get the, the very next stitch on the one side and the very next stitch on the other side. Treat them both as a single stitch. I'm going to work over top of my little tail here. And single crochet through them both. If you've made um, the granny squares uh, along with me and join them using the single crochet uh, joining method, this is essentially what you're doing. So you're holding the two panels together, you're grabbing a stitch that's exactly opposite the other one on each side, and you're single crocheting through both those stitches to create one stitch, one new row of stitches that runs across the top of both. So, go ahead and work with that. It might take you a little bit of time, so be patient. Don't need to rush, just pause the video and once we get to the end, we'll fasten off and move on to the next part of our TARDIS. <laughs> all right, I've made it all the way up, sewing, single crocheting, I should say, both my panels together, and I've put my last single crochet in that chain one corner space that was in the last uh, row of both sides. And I'm just going to fasten off, so snip my yarn, not a whole lot, and pull it back through that loop on my hook. Try not to split my yarn. <laughs> there we go. And you can see that that creates that nice little ridge effect that looks like it's two doors. So there's the front of our TARDIS, and I'm going to probably just pull this little white bit to the back. But you know what? I'll do that later when I'm... maybe I'll tack it down with a little bit of black. Um, these are the finishing little details you can do near, near the end. So that is the two front panels of our TARDIS. Now the next thing we need to do is grab our black yarn and add the little black part of the TARDIS top that will eventually say police box on it. So we're going to grab our black yarn and we're going to start with a slip knot. Remember not to make it too tight, you want to be able to move around on your hook. And all we're going to do is pick up our TARDIS front, identify the chain one space that's in between those two single crochets in that top corner, and we're going to join our black yarn with a single crochet in this corner. There we go. And then we're going to work a single crochet in each stitch across the entire top of our TARDIS front. That's the top of the TARDIS, that's the first row done. Now we're going to chain one, turn, and single crochet all the way back. You're going to single crochet back and forth in black for four or five rows. I'm going to say four or five because depending on the size of your stitches and the size of your yarn, you may find that four is tall enough 
and um, you may think that five is tall enough. You can make this black line, the sort of the black top part of the TARDIS, as tall as you like. It doesn't matter because we're going to make the back panel to match the front panel. So you can start crocheting and as soon as you feel that that top black line is thick enough, then, well, it's thick enough. <laughs> All right, I single crocheted four rows. I felt that that was tall enough, and that is as tall as I'm going to make that part. The next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to embroider police box across the top. Now this is optional. You don't have to do this if you think it's a little, a little sort of past your patience level, <laughs> but it's not difficult. So all we're going to do is cut some yarn, and we're going to do sort of what we did when we put in the iron bars here in the window. Just grab your yarn needle, grab some white thread, and you're just going to embroider really basic letters. So the word police will probably fit across here, and I'm going to put box so that it ends somewhere back here. Now it doesn't have to be perfect. Part of the niftiness about the TARDIS is because it's been, well, it's literally been everywhere and every when, so it's a little beat up at this point. And if the words police box look a little rough, that's perfectly all right. <laughs> you can just tell people it adds to the, uh, the, the vintageness or the, uh, the authenticity of it. I'm going to make my letters about two and a half to three um, rows tall. And all I'm going to do is just sort of approximate the actual letters. So I know how to make the letter P, for example. You start with a straight back line, and then you just kind of try and squarishly create the rest of the letter. So that's all I'm going to do. And I'm just going to keep sort of putting little stitches in back and forth until I get the word police box written across the top of my TARDIS. So see, there's my P. It's not super fancy, but it's definitely a P. And when it sits next to an O, <laughs> it'll look more like a P. <laughs> so you can continue to add these letters if you like. If you don't want to, you can sort of skip ahead to the next thing. But I'm going to put police box across the top of my, well, police box. <laughs> and I will see you guys when I'm finished. Once you've finished embroidering on your letters, if you're going to do that, it's now time to make the back panel of our TARDIS bag. So the front is now officially done. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a back panel that matches this. Now you can be really fancy and repeat this whole process all over again for the back if you like. Or you can be a little simpler like me and just create a panel that's the same size in dimensions and I'm just going to do mine in all blue. Now I'll probably add the four black lines at the top but I'm just going to start in all blue. Now how do I know if it's the right width. Well, that's easy enough. I can either single crochet a line until I feel that it matches it, or I can be really exacting and I can count my stitches. So there were nine stitches across the front of each original panel, so that's 18. Plus each panel got two rows individually around it, so that's an additional four stitches per panel. So what you have is 9 and 9, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. So 26 stitches across should be the exact width that I need in order to make a back panel that matches my front panel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain a base row of 27 because remember when you're single crocheting you need a turning chain at the end of each row. 26, 27. All right. So there's my base chain of 27, so that I will have one turning chain and 26 stitches. And that should be the exact width of my front panel. Then all I'm going to do is single crochet back and forth until I have achieved the correct number of rows that brings my back panel up to the same height as my front panel. And once again, that's easy to count too. So there were 15 blue rows and nine white rows in each panel to begin with. So 15 and nine is 24, plus the two extra um, rows on either side. So 25, 26, 
27, 28. So I know that if I make the back panel 28 rows high, it'll be the exact same height as the blue. And then I can add four more rows in black to match that, or just keep crocheting in blue if I'm not too picky about the color detailing on the back of my purse. That is pretty much all you need to do for the back panel. So remember to add a single turning chain at the end of each row and just single crochet back and forth, pausing every now and again to hold it up against your front panel just to make sure it matches. And that's all there is to the back panel. So I'll see you at the end of the back panel and then we'll move on from there. Okay, I've completed my back panel and all I did was single crochet back and forth. I did 28 rows in the blue to match the 28 rows in the blue at the front and I added four rows of black at the top to match the four rows of black at the top on the other side. And like I said, you can do the whole thing in blue if you want to keep it simple. Um, and just because I, I, I love, <laughs> I love this this sort of joke in the show, I added the script, it's bigger on the inside <laughs> to the back of my TARDIS bag. Because you know what? It is going to be bigger on the inside. <laughs> now we are going to get to the strap. The strap is going to be created so that it goes all the way around the bag so that you have two side panels and a bottom panel and it goes continuously all the way around the top. So in order to do that, we're going to make sure that we cro or we chain a length that is long enough to go all the way around the outside of the bag. And then in a sense, you want to think of it being at least doubled so that you've got this much space again around your um, to go over your shoulder or over your neck and maybe a little bit of extra. So what I'm going to do is I took a count all the way around the three sides of one front or back panel is 90 stitches. So 28, or I should say 32 down one side and the other, and 26 across the bottom. So I've got 90 stitches all the way around. So I want to have at least 90 to cover off the sides and the bottom of my bag. Then I want to have at least 90 again so that I have a, a decent sized strap. And because I kind of like this to hang a little longer, I'm going to add a few more, so possibly another 32 in another 32 sort of um, stitches or chains. But what I'm going to do first is start with the 90 and the second 90, and then lay it out around my bag and visually inspect it to see how long I think it looks. And I want you guys to do this too because a bag strap is extremely personal. You may like your bag to hang by your hip. You might like it to hang just underneath your arm. Um, that's why it's really important to get this. Uh, the size that you want right off the bat. So all I'm going to do to start is make myself a slip knot because all we're going to do is start chaining. I'm going to chain the first 90 and then I'm going to chain a second 90. So 180 stitches to begin with, or I should say 180 chains. And then I'm going to lay it around my bag panel and I'm going to eyeball it and decide how many more I want to add on top of that. Okay, I started with a chain length of 200, so that's 90 to go all the way around my panel, another 90 just to double it, and then I decided that it could still be a little bit longer, but I'm probably not going to make it any longer than that, because um, if I lay it around my bag, and then keep in mind that there's going to be a little bit of stretch, um, I don't want... I don't want to make it too, too long because I don't want it to be um, stretching down too far past my hip. So I'm going to stick with 200. Now, in the event that your TARDIS bag strap stretches in the future, I'm going to show you a neat little trick that you can do to shorten it without actually damaging the crochet work you did. So I'm going to go with a base chain length of 200. It's a nice even number, something I can easily remember. I'm going to chain one, <laughs> one more, so 201, because that's my turning chain, and I'm going to work back and forth in the same single crochet stitch that I've been making the rest of the TARDIS bag in. So I'm going to single crochet back across these 200 chains, keeping in mind that the extra one I added was a turning chain, so that I will have a strap 
that's 200 stitches long. I know it sounds like a lot, but you know, just plunk yourself down in front of the TV or the radio and put your feet up and just go at it for a little while. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> And I'm going to go back and forth with single crochet boom, 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 until I've made a, a strap that's as thick as I like. So if I look at this, I know that this is what my single crochet gauge is. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight rows right there. Now that might be too wide for a strap. So I'm going to do at least six rows and then I'll decide if I think that that's wide enough. Keep in mind that your strap is going to be the width of your bag. It'll be the bottom and it'll be the side pieces because we're actually going to work this all the way around the entire bag. So keep that in mind when you're adding rows to your strap. It's also the width of your bag. Um, so just work away at that for a little while and once you've got your big long strap all put together, come on back and we will assemble the TARDIS. <laughs> Once you've finished your strap, and I've made mine six rows deep, so that's sort of going to be the width of my bag, because remember, this is going to sort of be across the bottom and also across the sides of my bag. So once you've got that all done, you can weave in your ends, and then you want to find the exact middle. So you can count, if you like, or you can take the easy way out because this doesn't have to be exact. You could just pair up the ends of your strap and kind of run them parallel to each other. Don't try not to stretch it too much, but make sure they lie flat. And then once you get to the very end and it's pinched, you can just mark that sort of middle space with your yarn needle. Then you can unfold it. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to single crochet our strap onto the front of our bag. So I'm going to take the middle of my strap and line it up with the middle of my TARDIS front and I'm going to pin the two together. So just like I'd be pinning together fabric, I'm just going to pin the two together using my yarn needle. And now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of match up the corners and remember that you've got rounded corners on this project. So each corner on the outside row of these panels was a single crochet, chain one, single crochet. So you want to actually match up three stitches along the outside of your strap with those corners. And if you've got extra yarn needles lying around, you can use these or safety pins, whatever you've got. Just tack the corners together and do it on both sides. There we go. And then you want to lay the both the sort of the the sides together too. And um, you can sort of it's kind of easy to eyeball this because it's it's single crochet and it's the same stitch. Now the edges of your black are going to be a little different and the edges of your back panel are going to be a little different. That's why we're doing the front panel first. So you're going to want to just connect, put one last little kind of <laughs> tack on the one side because we're going to start the crocheting on this side. Now if you get, so you're going to single crochet all the way around the edge of your bag and your strap to sort of connect together just like you did with the two panels here in the front. And if you find that your strap gets a little more kind of skewed one way or the other, that's okay because eventually when we put these together up top, we're either going to overlap them because at this point you can put your bag on when you're all done and decide how long your strap is or you can connect them right at the end. So it's always a little bit better to err on the side of too big because a little extra padding up top over your shoulder never hurt anybody. So that's what you're going to do. You're going to just tack them into place, line up this sort of side because we're going to start single crocheting up here and go all the way around. Grab your hook and grab your yarn and we're going to start with a slip knot. So you take your yarn, make yourself a slip knot. Make sure it moves around on your hook. Just make sure that you've got a nice 
even sort of lie between both your pieces and then pretty much where you think you should start have your slip knot on your hook put your hook through the first stitch of your strap and through the top stitch of the edge of your black piece on the front and remember if you did four rows you're going to work four stitches along the side of that if you did five rows it's five stitches so however many rows deep your black line is is how many corresponding stitches you're going to work through along the strap here so we're going to join our yarn with a single crochet to attach both of the strap and the front panel together and then just like when you put together the two front panels you're just going to work pick up the next stitch on both sides and single crochet and pick up the next set of stitches on both sides and single crochet and the next set and down you go you pick up the next single crochet which now should be blue if you only did four rows of black there it is remember to try not to skip any stitches because you want this to sort of be mostly flat and even all the way around so just work your way down putting a single crochet through both a set of stitches so one stitch from your strap one stitch from the front panel and work through both sets as you go all the way down when you get to the corners remember to work through the single crochet the chain one space and the single crochet so each corner has three sort of stitches in it and um, just work your way all the way around take your time make sure it looks even and remember if you have to cheat go ahead <laughs> all right we joined our yarn with a single crochet to connect the strap and the top corner of our police box up here we single crocheted all the way down around the corner across the bottom picked up a stitch on the bottom of our little ridge connector here continued all the way around the bottom around the other corner up the other side and now we've put our last stitch in the top of the police box and the corresponding stitch on our strap so now we're going to snip our yarn and just fasten off that is the front part of our bag put together so there's a bottom now and two sides and I'm just going to weave in that end and then we're going to flip it over and put the back side on all right we're going to flip our bag over and because we already did the figuring so we kind of figured out where the center of our strap was and we lined it up with the center front of our TARDIS and sort of tacked it into place it's going to be a little easier to do the back so all you want to do is just sort of place your back panel inside the purse sort of skeleton here and line it up at the front and you're going to make sure that the top edges are flush so you want to make sure that your two top edges are the same they match up with the two front top edges and then you can do the same thing you can sort of grab a couple of your yarn needles or some safety pins and just kind of tack the two pieces together just so when you're working they will kind of be where they need to be when you get to them so I'm going to come straight across here and line that up and tack it now you've got a choice here you can single crochet all the way around like we did with the other side or you can just sort of whip stitch it together using one of your yarn needles and some yarn um, the reason I say you've got a choice is because the back putting when you start single crocheting all the way around the edge you might want to go the op you're going to want to go the opposite direction so we we ended here 
you're going to start here and go all the way around. And that should hopefully, if, if it started to do this on one side, it'll do this on the other. So the two of them will end up matching up. But if you don't want to sort of run that risk, then you can whip stitch it together using a yarn needle and some yarn because you can sort of cheat the corners or cheat the edges if that's going to be of concern to you. But remember, this is the back of your bag. <laughs> so it doesn't have to be supremely perfect. Um, and if you sort of take your time and make sure that your edges are pretty much lined up um, and then single crocheting around the edge shouldn't be too much of a problem. But the other reason you might find it easy to, easier to sort of whip stitch is because you don't have defined single crochets down these edges like you did on the front. So if that worries you at all, then go ahead and just whip stitch it. It will not change the effect or the picture or the sort of the, the overall image of your TARDIS. Um, and you'll, it won't necessarily make it any weaker, especially if you're going to line it. Um, but if you want to go ahead and single crochet it, just to keep the consistency of the front, then you can try that too. So I'm going to leave that up to you. This is just exactly the same as putting on the front uh, with our strap. You're just going to line up all your edges, sort of lightly tack them into place. If you're going to start sewing, start here, work your way all the way around. And if you're going to single crochet, do the same thing. Start with a slip knot, start in this corner, and work through each pair of stitches all the way down one side, three in the corner, across the bottom, three in the corner, and back up the top to the other side. And I will see you once you've put that together. Once you've finished single crocheting your back panel onto your strap all the way around, or whip stitching, that's fine. Once you get back up to the end corner, if you single crocheted, don't bother snipping your yarn and fastening off. Uh, if you already did, don't worry, just create another slip knot and join your yarn with a single crochet or a slip stitch somewhere around here. If you whip stitched all the way around the corner, great. Um, just knot up and weave in your ends and join your yarn again with a slip stitch. Somewhere in the corner here between the top corner of the back of your purse and this uh, strap area. It doesn't have to be really exacting and, and uh, perfect. You're just going to hide it anyway. What we're going to do now is we're going to slip stitch from the front across, or should say from the back, across our strap to the front. This is going to add a little bit of strength and it's also going to bring our yarn around to where we need it in the front to sort of do our last little bit of decoration. So remember, if you're slip stitching, you just put your hooks through the fabric and grab your yarn and bring it back. And put the last one, ooh, maybe somewhere in the top of your joining blue ridge or right through it, wherever your hook goes. This doesn't have to be perfect. So all we're doing is we're just coming across here with our yarn, making, giving it another like nice little boxy panel. These are just little details and I love them. Now we're back up to the front. So we'll get our straps out of the way. We're going to chain one and we're going to start to single crochet across the top of our, bl our black uh, ridge. So find the corner and begin single crochet. And this is just going to finish off the top of our TARDIS bag really, really neatly. And it's also going to provide us an opportunity to create a closure. Because what bag is complete without a neat little closure? Now, if you wanted to get really fancy, you could put in a zipper here, you could put in buttons or Velcro, but I'm just going to show you a really simple closure today that um, you'll probably find pretty helpful when you're creating other little bags and things. Once you get across to the middle of your bag, so you've seen single crocheted across the top of your black strip and you get right up to the middle, somewhat in line with this middle panel piece, you're going to chain 10. One, two, three, and 10. So once you've chained 10, you've basically made a cute little loop and that you're going to single crochet back into the same 
stitch here along the black that you put your last single crochet. So you're basically just creating a nice big loop and then you're going to continue single crocheting across the rest of the sort of the front of your TARDIS. And it'll look something like that. Once you get to the other side of, your, of the front of your police box, <laughs> you'll be at the other edge where it meets up with your strap. And you're going to do the same thing here. So make sure your strap is sort of on the outside and your yarn is on the inside. And you're going to slip stitch across the top of your strap, just like we did on the other side. You're going to slip stitch a fairly straight line all the way across your strap. This will give it that nice little detail of it being a square side. It'll bring our yarn out to where we want it and it'll also add a little bit of strength to your bag because if you're putting in the lining like I am, you're going to be sewing it across this slip stitched space. So once you get around to the back, put your last one, oh, through that, that joining ridge, if you like. Make sure it comes out to somewhere near the top of your black stripe. Chain one and start single crocheting. You're going to single crochet across the top back of your bag, just so that it matches the front. And once we get to the very middle of our bag, we're going to do something kind of cool. All right, I've finished single crocheting about halfway across the back panel of my bag. And once I'm about to the midway point, I'm going to pause and I'm going to start chaining again. This time I'm going to chain 22 or 23 and I'll show you why. One, two, all right. There's a chain length of 23. This is going to be one of the, the ties for my TARDIS bag and I think that's going to be long enough. I'm probably only ever going to just knot it gently anyway. So once I've got 23 and if you think you want it a little longer go ahead. I'm just going to slip stitch into the second chain from my hook and I'm going to slip stitch in each chain all the way back down to the edge of my bag and this is just so that I can create a fairly strong long enough tie. Once you've slip stitched all the way back down the length of that chained sort of string you made and you get right back to the bottom of that and you're near the edge of your bag, single crochet into the next stitch along and then repeat the process so that you've got two ties. So I'm just going to put a couple, one little sort of single crochet space between them and then I'm going to chain 23 all over again and repeat the process. Four. Once you've finished slip stitching down the length of your second tie, single crochet in the next space along the top of your TARDIS bag and then continue finishing off that nice line of blue single crochet and at this point you're going to get back to where you started and you can just finish off that line, slip stitch somewhere into the corner of your bag and fasten off. There, I've put in my two ties. I've completed that nice line of blue single crochet across the top back of my bag. I'm back to the corner where I started and I'm just going to slip my hook in the corner somewhere here and just slip stitch to close off that entire row. I'm going to snip my yarn and then I'm going to fasten off and weave in that end. And that is the construction of your TARDIS bag. Now that we've got the shell of our TARDIS put together, it's time to measure to make our lining. So you want to grab your cotton fabric and a measuring tape and this is what you're going to do. You're going to measure from this bottom of one side all the way across 
to the bottom of the other side. Why? Because you want to construct an inside bag that's a, a bit larger than the outside of your TARDIS. And the reason for that is that your bag has a little bit of play. So you don't want to make your lining too small. So if I measure from one side of the desk all the way over to the other side of the desk, I get 13 inches, but I'm going to add an extra inch for salvage. So I'm going to cut two pieces of fabric that are 14 inches wide. And I'm going to say that that's about the same plus the salvage going this way, because this is pretty much a decent sized square. So I'm going to cut two pieces of fabric that are 14 inches squared, so 14 across and 14 long. And I'm going to do that right now. All right, I've cut two pieces of fabric, as you can see, that are exactly 14 inches square each. Now, that doesn't have to be super perfect, but um, they're 14 across by 14 wide. And now all I'm going to do is I'm going to sew down one side across the bottom and then up the other side. You can use a sewing machine. A serger, if you're lucky and you have one of those, that's on my list of goodies to get. <laughs> or you can hand sew it. Neither one of those options takes very long. You just want to sew down basically three sides and leave the top open. Once you've sewn all the way around three of the edges so that the top part of your lining is open, you can hem the top. So a nice thing to do is to iron, sort of open it up and iron all of your edges flat. It just kind of makes everything look neater. But um, if you're in a hurry or you're lazy, <laughs> you don't have to do that. This is after all just the lining of a purse. All you want to do is roll down the top edge of your purse liner, maybe twice, and just tack it into place and then stitch all the way around. So you want to just roll it down twice and stitch all the way around and that will finish off the edge. Just remember that you want to roll it down onto the wrong side of your fabric. So don't turn it inside out just yet. Just roll down your edges and sew all the way around the top to create a nice little finished seam at the top edge. Once you've rolled it down your edge you can see that on the inside of your bag, you've got a nice finished lining. So all of the edging work is should be on the outside and should stay on the outside. And if you want, you can sort of zigzag your raw edges, but um, I'm not gonna bother. <laughs> I probably won't be washing my bag, and even if I do, I'll just be spot washing it. So I'm not too worried about my edges fraying and becoming really, really thin. But if you're concerned, you can run an extra stitching edge all the way around the end. You can zigzag your edges. This would be sort of the finer points of sewing, but since this is just a simple little uh, sack liner for our purse, I'm not gonna get into the details of the finer arts of sewing. <laughs> We'll leave that for another day. All right, all you're going to do now is sew your lining into your TARDIS bag. So you're going to leave it with the raw edges facing outwards, and you're just going to shove the whole thing inside your TARDIS bag. And you're going to line up your edges. So you're going to take sort of the seamed corner um, of one side and just grab a sewing needle if you've got a couple lying around or a safety pin or a straight pin and you're just going to tack it in place so you're not actually sewing it you're just tacking it into place and there's one side and you're going to spin your bag around find your other sort of seam and line it up with the middle of your other side so somewhere in the middle and grab another sewing needle and just tack it into place. Once you've pinned your two seam sides into place on the inside of your 
TARDIS edges. Just go ahead and evenly distribute the rest of your edging for your liner along the rest of the outside of your purse. Now hopefully you'll have a little more liner than you have purse edge. It's always okay to have more because the outside is going to stretch a bit so you want to be able to sort of sew this loosely into place and anytime you've got like a little too much you can also sort of tack down little folds as you go and that will just create a little more volume of liner inside your bag. So you can continue to add a few pins just to sort of make sure that your liner is kind of where you think it should be. I'm just going to tack it just underneath the lip of the edge of this purse. And once you've gone ahead and tacked it down everywhere you think it's sort of evenly placed you can grab your yarn, or sorry, you grab your thread and your sewing needle and start sewing. Once you've sewn in your liner, and I've gone through the bottom of every single sort of end of a, of a stitch, just below the lip of the outside of my, my bag, um, I've taken care to make sure that I've stretched the outside a little bit before I'd put in a stitch, just because I wanted it to be able to stretch with the outside of my bag. And anywhere I had a little bit of excess, I just made a little tiny pleat by folding over the fabric, putting in a couple of extra stitches, and then continuing. So you can sew in your liner however you're comfortable. Make sure all of your um, pins and needles are out. And the very last thing we have to do is just close up our strap. Now I went ahead and I measured so that I could see that my straps, if I kind of hold them evenly, there's a little bit of excess up here. And so if I close this over, then that'll make my bag pretty much even where I'd like it to be. Plus this will give it a little extra padding up top. So I'm going to hold my two edges together. I'm going to make sure that my straps don't twist. So this one's straight and this one's straight. And then I'm going to just hold them together or pin them together. I'm going to cut a length of yarn. I'm going to thread up my yarn needle. And then I'm just going to whip stitch around the edges. So I'm going to join my yarn through both these stitches here. I'll leave a little bit of a tail out because I'm going to use that to knot it because I'm going to go all the way around. And I'm going to put another stitch in that same set of stitches. And then I'm going to work my way across this little edge, taking care to keep my little end out of the when way. When I get to the edge, I'm going to put an extra stitch in right at the edge. And then Working down the top, I'm just going to go all the way through and then bring my needle up from the bottom through both sides and all the way down. And I'm just going to tack both sides together going back and forth through both sides of both straps. And that's just to work my way down across the top. This will also kind of make them look a little more like they're part of each other and it'll help keep the edges even. All right, so once you've gone all the way down one side, across, up the other, and then come back up the other side, you should be back where you left your little tail. So I'm going to snip my yarn and I'm gonna knot these two pieces together and then once they're knotted together, I'm going to weave them in. So I'm going to make sure that they're on the underside of my straps. So this is the top, this is the bottom. And I'm just going to weave them in. And once you've got your straps sewn together, you've got a nice strong sort of, sort of seam up top. You've got your lining in and you've got your little closure and you are now ready to go anywhere 
that your TARDIS wants to go. how you make your very own TARDIS. And as an added extra cool bonus, I want to know where you guys are going to travel with your TARDISes this summer. So if you're going traveling and you're taking your very own TARDIS with you, post me a picture. Are you going shopping? Are you going to the beach? Are you in the desert? Are you climbing mountains? Where are you off to this summer? Where is your TARDIS going to take you? Show me. Post me a picture, tag me at Jaden Stitches, and you can post it to Google Plus or Instagram or Facebook, and I will be sure to see it. And I will also post pictures of where I'm traveling with my TARDIS this summer. I have no idea where I'm going to end up, but you know what? It's big enough to carry some crochet supplies, so that's all I need in a bag. <laughs> That's it for today, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to this super cool, extra special Jada and Stitches show where we pay a little tribute to the Doctor Who show. And you know what? It's 50 years old this year, so that's kind of an appropriate thing to do. Pretty awesome. 50 years of traveling through space and time and inspiring just general awesomeness and geekery. <laughs> that's it for this week. Please tune in again soon. We will hopefully have another few quick tips coming at you. And if you haven't been to our website lately, we've been updating and we've even added another free pattern. And I'm not going to tell you what it is. You have to go and check it out for yourself, but it's super cute. So make sure you check us out at www.jadaandstitches.com. Go to the workshop page and check out all of our free patterns. And thank you also to everybody who has visited our Etsy shop and shown us some love and support there too. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Certainly helps us keep bringing you super fun ideas like the TARDIS bag. So that's it. Thank you so much for tuning in. We will see you again really, really soon. Have fun and happy travels, everybody. Bye. <laughs> now, where am I going to go? Have TARDIS, we'll travel. <laughs>